Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week is a lightweight hill climbing bike special because it was the British National Hill Climb Champs at the weekend. I was there and I managed to get my hands on loads of amazing lightweight bikes. We're going to be showing you those and discussing what is the best bike for, for, for going uphill. Absolutely buzzing for it. We've also got comments of the week and the bike vault. What more do you want? First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. Um, last week we asked whether we thought um, there should be more road bike only time trials. Um, results are in. 67% of people said yes, they're much more relatable. Yeah. In line with kind of our thoughts, I think. Two thirds. Two thirds. There you go. Um, which leaves the other the rest of the people saying no. They just want TT bikes just all the time. Just want TT bikes all the time. Yeah. Well, there you go. So last weekend was the British National Hill Climb Championships on the Old Shoe Climb in North Wales. Not only did it look incredible, you were there on the ground racing. I did, yeah. It, it was an amazing event. So for those of you unfamiliar, the Old Shoe Climb, it's one and a half kilometers long with an average rating over 12%. So it's wow. a brute. But the atmosphere and, and the crowds there were just phenomenal. R racing up, going through the people, there was like a tunnel of noise that was like something you'd see on a, a summit finish in the Tour de France. But this is an event that like anyone, even me, can turn up and, and have a go and enter. I mean, these events are pretty impressive. I've got to say, shout out to the organisers for this. Yeah, Velotic and, and Wrexham RC for putting on an amazing event. But yeah, it, it, you don't have to be the best. You just turn up and have a go. It's amazing. I, I think it's it. incredible. However, unlike the Tour de France, there's no 6.8 kilogram weight limit here. So yeah, we haven't got the UCI getting involved, have we? Yes, they have no jurisdiction here, which means there's loads of incredible lightweight bikes there. As mentioned, that you know, I've managed to get my hands on quite a few, but you see a, a lot of brilliant modifications that the riders do to make their bikes as light as possible. You know, things like stripping the paint off is oh, quite who common. On, who on earth would do that? Some sort of lunatic yeah, stripping well. the paint off their bike. Um, there's been loads of crazy stuff going on with all the different mods and upgrades that people have done to their bikes. But the most important thing I want to know first, who won? Well, our very own Stig slash Twig, Andrew Feather, he took uh, the win. Amazing ride. Oh yeah? Yeah. So How did he win by? He, well, this is the thing though. He only won by a very small margin, just two and a half seconds. That is so, a very narrow yeah. margin. So he did the climb in five minutes 29 and mm -hmm. averaged 511 watts what? according to his Strava. Yeah, I know. That is absolutely insane. And he's, insane. Just, he's just like 61, 62 kilograms, so he's, he's very light. I like. did uh, seven minutes, seven seconds, and that was off 393 watts, which I thought was really good for me. Well, that's, a, that's great for anyone. A minute and a half slower than Feather. <laughs> well, yeah, so you know how you're feeling compared to Andrew Feather. That's what yeah. I feel like compared to you. Oh, okay. I've actually done some maths here. Right. Um, so Feather has done 8.24 watts per kilogram, which is like, that's like mind blowing. Yeah, big, Gosh. isn't it? Oh, loads of stuff to unpick here. So, loads of tech yeah, going on. There is. So, yeah. Feather's, Feather's bike is um, his, his Cannondale Super 6 Evo that he rides in hill climbs. 5.2 kilograms that weighs. Um, whereas I was riding uh, the Canyon Ultimate CFR, that was 6.7 kilograms. So, well, that's probably why he beat me, to be honest. Possibly the only reason. Now, you've actually reached out to some experts, I mean, to get their sort of analysis and sort of perception of some of the differences between what we've had for first place and second place. Yeah, so reached out to both Xavier Disley from Aero Coach and yep. also mywindsock.com um, and to, to, to work out what is the actual quantifiable difference between first place at Andrew Feather and 2.4 and seconds behind him, Tom Bell in second place. And according to Aero Coach, it equates to 3.3 watts. That so if Tom term, Bell had done 3.3 watts more average across the climb, he would have equaled um, Feather. Uh, or in weight terms, mm -hmm. 503 grams. So half a kilo. Half a kilo. Yeah. And then my windsock, they yeah. suggested very similar numbers. So it's good to see that they're working this out in the same independently, but coming yeah. to a similar conclusion. They suggested it would be 3.5 watts. Yeah. And again, half a kilo. So every watt does count, especially when you're trying to race at the top level. And I guess 
the realms of like what three point whatever watts, we're talking sort of the differences of drivetrain efficiency and stuff like that. 3.3 watts isn't much, is it? I mean, it's all those marginal gains. Um, my windsock also quantified it in terms of uh, CDA and drag reduction. So they said if if the, the difference in drag, if Tom Bell had been 0 0.035 lower in his CDA, he yeah. would have also equaled uh, Feather. So what's that we're talking like? Time Basically, he has to sort of do the climb on tri bars. What about... Tri bars make more of a difference <laughs> yeah. than that on the flat when you're going fast. Yeah. But even on a climb where they're averaging, you know, sort of 16k an hour, they make less difference, but they still make a difference. So obviously that's actually ridiculous because you probably couldn't get the power out in tri bars on a climb. But the like theory's that. there. Yeah. Now, yeah. talking about you were racing, I obviously wasn't there. So I've kind of taken some of the power data from Andrew Feather and I've like multiplied that up for me. Right. Someone that's clearly quite a lot so heavier. So what than power would you have to do to beat Andrew Feather? <laughs> well, I'm quite a bit heavier. So yeah. if we take the eight point, um, what was it, 8.2 watts per kilo, whatever it was, mm. I would have to have an average power of 660 watts for what, five minutes, 27 seconds. What's your best uh, for five minutes? In the minutes? best absolute condition I'd ever been when I was racing, 500 watts, best ever. There you go. And even then I was still 15 kilos heavier than Feather. <laughs> So that kind of puts it into perspective. Yeah. Me at my very best was still going to be a little way off that. Yeah, um, he is. He is phenomenal, isn't he? Um, what about you? What? How? What sort of power are you going to have to do? I think I know? would have to be probably like twenty kilograms lighter, and, prob <laughs> and probably in a fed recumbent to have oh. a chance. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah. So I didn't get my hands on uh, Tom Bell's bike this time, but last year at the Hill Climb Champs, he won, and we we had a look at his bike. It was about five and a half kilos. Oh, so you know you can see why weight weenies love this love this sport, can't you? If if he got his bike down lighter, which he could conceivably do, I mean Feather's bike is what close to five kilos. If he gets a slightly aero, more aero, lighter bike, then he's he's there, isn't he? <sighs> yeah, that's we, good, isn't it? That is impressive. We should also give a mention to Illy Gardner, winner of the women's event, also she, current she did, women's. Um, Everest yeah, record she holder. Yeah, a phenomenal ride. I've got a time here, 6 minutes 46. Beat me. Absolutely rapid, yeah. these sort of times. Amazing. Now, most of the people at the top of the leaderboard were looking at using rim brake road bikes. Yeah, so Illy Gardner, Feather, Bell. But not everybody. Brakes. Yes, well, interesting this. Um, so third place male was um, Rich Bussell who you may remember was in our beginner amateur pro time trial bike video. He's an absolute Absolutely hitter. rapid. Yeah, yeah, he's been a national time trial champion before. He's, he's also um, a former national hill climb champion actually as well. Now he was a bit of a dark horse for this event. A lot of people wouldn't have expected him to be on the podium, probably yes. looking at other riders like Ed Laverack, for example. He rode a disc brake bike. He did ride a disc brake bike. The, the, the reason, well, the interesting thing is, is, well, Rich Bussell was riding for Aero Coach and they, took a real kind of like scientific sort of analysis approach, breaking the climb down as to what was the optimum tech. He rode a fixie. What? Uphill? Yeah. Oh, to be fair, I have seen people do this in the past, but it scares me to just think that you, you're stuck with one gear. Yeah, so the advantage of a fixie is that it can be a much lighter, uh, more simple bike, a bit more aerodynamic because there's mm -hmm. less gubbins. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you don't have to have uh, two braking systems, you just have to have one brake on it because the, the fixed gear counts as a braking system as well because you can back Oh, you just need your front brake. You don't need any derailleurs or anything. You can have, yeah, just a much lighter system. Um, and as long as you're on a climb that has a pretty constant gradient, one gear is sufficient. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's just like when you've got a climb that goes up in steps, like when we did the struggle, yeah. it would be rubbish for that. I mean, the struggle's got a little bit of downhill in it. Yeah. I've yeah. actually got the gearing that are used here. So some of the stats about the Fixie. 5.15 kilograms and a 36 tooth chainring and a 20 tooth sprocket. Yeah. That's absolutely nuts. What gearing did you use? Uh, well, I had a... <laughs> you had so all the gears. My <laughs> easiest gear, I think, was a, was a 36 30, and I was absolutely dying with that at the end. I'm not like, I, was, I was struggling with that. So, I mean, he's just well, he's a lot stronger than me. But, uh, um, some other bits of tech and details on this bike. We've got coarser speed tubular tyres, 23 mil. None of this are wide, comfy, modern tyres. No power meter, unbranded carbon fibre frame. And we've got some fancy front wheel here. We've got a Coroma MCC. I don't even know what front wheel that is. Yeah, yeah. Lightweight Coroma front wheel. And then wow. on the back, 
Um, it was actually a Planet X, uh, really lightweight rim that he'd then built up onto his, his own track hub. And uh, you've also got the, 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 the cockpit you'll notice is, it's a, a tr uh, like a TT bike base bar yeah. that they put on there. Um, again, it's like lighter having that base bar kind of style. It's kind of like homemade sort of bike creations, it, isn't it? it? I mean, this bike is great because it's, it's an absolute sort of like a parts bin special almost. You just like raided the cupboard of what yeah, you got left. Yeah, but, but like it's not a super expensive build. Yeah, it's an incredibly light, incredibly competitive build for hill climbs. And that's one of the nice things about hill climb bikes is they don't have to be super, super expensive. But I mean, some of the people at the top's bike, I mean, they're, their bike, they're spending big bucks. Some of them are, yeah. But I do really like the fact of what you mentioned. You don't have to spend loads of money. It's like a really accessible way of getting into racing. Uh, it wasn't the only person riding a fixie, though. A few other people had had the, the same idea. And, you know, as I mentioned, like, you know, you, you don't have to be the fastest at these events. You don't have to, you know, I'm certainly not. And, and you don't have to have, you know, the lightest, best bike. You just sort of, it's just an amazing experience to turn up, absolutely batter yourself, do the best that you can do and experience that atmosphere and, and the crowd and all the cheering and stuff. It's just a really cool thing to do. You know, a great example of that was a, was a chap I, I bumped into called Leon Newton, who had this uh, really cool, you know, steel fixed gear bike that, that he had. And then he just sort of rebuilt it into a, a hill climb bike. Um, he'd put, you know, similar sort of easy gear in, right on, it, on, the, yeah. on the back. And it even like got into the spirit of hill climbing by doing a bit of drillium. Drilled his brake out. He drilled his brake lever out and chopped the end of it off. So, you know, just to save a bit of weight That's on like the bike. That's like perfect hill climb stuff. That's yeah, like hill climb 101, drill yeah. stuff. It's not something you see much now because of the carbon bike, but it's back in you know the day when people were still riding a lot of steel bikes. They used to just drill holes in them and make them like Swiss cheese to save weight. But yeah, really cool, really cool. To you see. definitely don't see that on carbon bikes anymore. Do yeah, I know. And he was <laughs> he was taking part in his first ever national hill climb and just you know there just to enjoy it. And it, it was yeah, it was wicked. That for me is one of the best things about it. It's accessible to everybody. And so discussing what we have so far, I think it's probably fair to say the majority of people were on rim brake road bikes. They were, yeah. But not everybody, there are lots of disc brake bikes as well. What, what, what's one of your favorite bikes that you spotted? Well, so with so a bit controversial actually, for oh, some yeah? people, oh, the comment section, my favorite bike that I saw there was actually a disc brake bike. Oh, let me guess, was it your bike, was it? No, it wasn't my bike. <laughs> the, um, and, and this, you know, this isn't, this isn't because we've got a secret agenda for disc brakes. Are you don't. sure? <laughs> but like, yeah, this is um, the specialized S-Works Athos of Rebecca Richardson. Check this out. It, well, it looks incredible, incredible. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is a really light bike, but she's modified it to make it even lighter. Yeah. Now the first thing that stands out about it is the amazing sort of custom paint job. So it's a bare carbon frame, and then what she's done is, is put a white acrylic pen and sort of doodled on it, just like just cool stuff, things that's like personal to, to her and, and where she lives. And it just creates this really nice effect. But she's not lacquered that because, well, weight, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, it, the, the, some of the white acrylic pen has like rubbed off in places as the bike's been used, but I don't think that detracts. I think I think it adds to it. It's kind of create. It's and it, you always add it on again if you wanted to. But just colour cool. your bike back in if you want to. Yeah, I just think it creates a really nice uh, sort of personalised custom look to the bike, and it's just really smart. Something different. That's what I quite like mm. about it. So the weight of this bike, we're looking four point nine kilograms, and one of the most intriguing parts is the drivetrain. So we've got mm. SRAM XX1 Eagle chainset on here. Reason for that is that you can use a slightly smaller chainring because road cranks have yeah. got a larger BCD and the smaller chainring size you can use is quite often like a 34, isn't it? Yeah. So this bike was paired up with a 28, oh, 28 tooth chainring, sorry, and then we've got an 11 to 33 tooth cassette. Yeah. That but means that she can go most of the way up the climb staying in the saddle rather than having to get out the saddle like say someone like Andrew Feather would climb. Yeah, well that's, that's a, it's a really interesting point because like like Feather, as you know, if you've watched any of the videos, he, he basically can't climb seated. No. He is just <laughs> out the saddle like Alberto Contador. That's how he gets his power out. But Rebecca Richardson, you know, she's one of the top competitors on the female uh, side of the sport. She gets her power out seated. And so it's cool to see the bike has been geared and modified so that she can remain seated to get the power out. I, I think, uh, you know, on a, on a 
fast, more aero course, that can be decisive. Well, and using that smaller chainring means that you can improve the chain line of your, of your chain, yeah. help with a little bit of efficiency, like we were talking about first and second place in the men's event. Just a saving of a couple of watts could make all the difference. Yeah, and, and yeah, improving that chain line to the bigger cogs on the back, that's, yeah, it's cool. Well, she's optimised the drivetrain as well. It's got ceramic speed, oversized pulley wheel system on yeah. there, very bling. Um, and the other thing is, well, it's, it's SRAM uh, 12 speed on there, but definitely SRAM um, shifters yeah. paired with a rear mech is the kind of thing that you see most people using. Most people are running one by yeah. in hill climbs with SRAM shifters and um, an 11 speed SRAM ETAP rear mech. Some people have even been using the little blip buttons and having them taped onto the handlebars yeah, rather we'll than using minute, the, yeah. the shifters, which is pretty impressive, I think. I mean, this is a, a sort of money, no object hill climb build. Yeah. I, I, very nice. I mean, you'll notice it like the hoods have been removed as well, the normal plastic hoods. That's a common modification I saw on quite a lot of ultralight bikes. Um, instead, you've just got a bit of tape on there, a bit of fabric tape, much lighter. Just on the hoods, little, no tiny more tape. bit of comfort, yeah, and no bar tape. That's why would you have bar tape? You don't need bar tape. Well, I took the bar tape off my hill climb. I've yeah, got to say, yeah. I don't think it helped me out a vast amount. Yeah, every I mean, little helps, though. Yeah, <laughs> and the other things are you've got like AX lightness rims, super light, and then these are held uh, well held together onto the hubs by these uh, bird spokes they're called they're sort of dyneema spokes which is like a fabric so when they're just you could tie knots and like string but in it's tension yeah. they're said to be stronger than steel spokes so make really stiff wheels um quite a few riders had those on, on their bikes as well um, you can also see that the dyneema fab fiber has been used to actually tie the saddle on as well what save it well yeah i've never seen that before oh, so it's I'm, not not clamped and bolted in no, it's, it's like just tied on held on with the fiber and um some really blink <laughs> parts from Daramo, so like the custom uh, handlebar stem and sequence, yeah. they're all Daramo parts, which is super like premium, lightweight carbon stuff. Really nice. That stuff is very bling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, when you're cycling uphill, braking isn't normally at the top of your priority list, is it? <laughs> but we've got some pretty impressive brake rotors here. So these are the Ashima Air rotors, and they're said to save around 20 grams compared to the Durace ones. Yeah. Although I have heard they're not that effective at slowing you down. Yeah, Re mm. Rebecca did tell me that they were rubbish. <laughs> um, well, I guess, yeah, when you're at the top of the hill climb, maybe you've just got to go pretty steady on the way there. Well, you say that, but funny story. So what I, what I told you Feather won, what I haven't told you is what happened after he won. So he crossed the finish line, he was so committed, he was just going so full send, he was so focused to get across that finish line as fast as he could. He didn't actually stop when he crossed the finish line. Well, what did he do? He just carried on going and there was a barrier behind the finish line. <laughs> he went straight into it and then like somersaulted over it. Like, please, and please tell me you've managed to get a I've not managed, well, it, after we've, we might find some, if we've got some footage, we'll put it in now. If we haven't got any footage of it, if any of you have any mobile phone footage of Andrew <laughs> Feather going over the barriers at the end of the hill, please, please like get in touch and share it with us because that is going to go into like, the canon of amazing GCN clips That'd be forever. GCN YouTube gold. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Now, I mentioned earlier that Ed Lavrak was riding a disc brake bike, so that was the Factor O2 van. Yeah, he was. He, a couple of interesting mods on his bike, actually. So he put a heavier, uh, wider 28mm tyre on the back because he was a bit worried about traction. Makes sense. Um, which can be an issue in these hill climbs, especially happening in, in autumn or fall, fall. here in America. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the roads can be a bit slippy and it was Something a bit wet. Something you struggled with or not? Were you all right? I was fine for traction. Um, yeah? Everyone else, no, I didn't hear anyone have any issues. Oh, okay, really. yeah, fair enough. Um, but the, um, and the other thing was, is you'll notice on his front fork blade, there's actually some plasters. That's not because it's fallen over and cut itself. <laughs> That's actually, he put some plasters on there to protect the frame where he put the timing uh, chip. Oh, yeah. I thought it just had some I just scratches. Thought, I just thought it was quite funny. <laughs> Um, what do you think was one of the most popular bikes you see? Is there a type of bike that you know what? Oh, really is, been used by lots of people? Well, this is the mad thing about the hill climbing thing, Kate. Okay. So, I, one of still one of the most popular bikes is the Cannondale Super Six Evo High Mod frame from like a few years ago. Yeah, but the the, the old one, yeah. not the one with the drop stays that came out like five years ago, like the previous generation, the one that had the classic. Um, silhouette with the, the flat top tube, you know, and the... Like, like traditional geometry, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and like, th that was the kind of bike that was ridden by Andrew Feather, Dan Evans, and, and just countless others. I mean, you can see some here. That This bike remains like the hill climbing, like, 
bike because it's such a lightweight, stiff frame and it's rim brake. Rim brake. Yeah. And you know, they can build these bikes lighter. And when you say that the, the winning margin was 500 grams, that's the difference between a disc brake bike and a rim brake bike. All makes sense now. So like pure just riding up a hill, hill climbing, it's a bit of a niche, isn't it? It but is niche, yeah. While like more modern bikes that have come out now that are like disc brakes and stuff, they they might be a better all-round bike for all applications, but when it comes to just like the niche of just a pure hill climb, just going up, there's no doubt in my mind that like a lighter rim brake bike is is, is going to be the, the better bike. It's going to be the faster bike. So it's 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 interesting that you know these are increasingly now just not available. But not yeah. just the bikes, the wheels as well. Yeah, that's true. So you rode Canyon's Ultimate, the latest one, disc mm. brake only. However, there were quite a few people using the previous generation Ultimate available in rim brakes. Perfect example, Charlie Openshaw has got his Canyon Ultimate CF SLX, like stealthy black, minimalist paint job, loads of really lightweight parts in there, set up with SRAM ETAP 11 speed, I think. Again, SRAM, yeah. Going one back by, to the previous of course. Yeah. Um, he's got a nice quark power meter on here with a really bling carbon uh, one by chain ring. Oh, very posh. Um, I think that's a 40 tooth chain ring he's got on the front there um, with uh, an 1128 cassette. But, you know, it's a, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite posh. But then some of the other bits on there, he's just been really smart about the build. So you were saying how it, it wasn't actually super expensive. You know, he's, he's got like an unbranded sort of very thin carbon saddle on there. Yeah. He's got the bullhorn bars, like a zip um, a VUCA bar on there, which is set up, as we mentioned previously, with the, the SRAM blips. It's a good so way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, blip box under the stem, yeah. uh, SRAM blips, all stuff that he bought used on like eBay and stuff and like marketplaces to so, keep the price down. Um, CNC machined brake calipers as well, saves some weight over standard ones. Yeah, I think they're Planet X ones. Ooh, um, nice, yeah. So yeah, I mean brake calipers is a massive area where you can save weight over like the standard ones and often these super light brakes, the, the performance of them is a bit crap, yeah. but like you say, you don't need optimum braking performance in this in this application. Now, talking about rim brakes as well, I think it's pretty fair to say the majority of people are using tubular tyres, a technology which we have kind of said is kind of falling out of fashion a little bit, really, isn't it? Yeah, well, again, but then like the tubular wheels, harder to get hold of because the big brands just aren't making them. So if, if you look back on yeah, Charlie's bike, you can see he's using these Z wheels. Now, I think this is a, a very sort of small, in, you know, independent um, wheel builder based in South Yorkshire who just, you know, puts these together. But quite a lot of riders seem to be switched onto this at the hill climb. You know, I'd never seen Z wheels before. Then at the hill climb, tons you can see of loads stuff. of bikes using these Z wheels, with, and they they've been built up often with the, the Dyneema spokes as well. Super lightweight, extra light hubs. Mm. Beautiful. Another really cool hack on this bike is the, the cable outers that he's using for his brake cables. They're actually mountain bike cable inners. He strips the, the mountain bike cable um, away wow. at the outer, so yeah. it's just this white inner, and then he's used those which work really well as, as road bike outers. Now, that, that has taken weight saving to another level. Yeah, can't but say. the clever thing is he was telling me that they weigh less than the fancy pants um, like Jaguar cables you can buy. So here's some footage of the Jaguar cables. Yeah. You, a lot of people buy these expensive Jaguar cable outers because they're so light, but these are lighter and cheaper. Well, Good hack, go. I like it. Um, something else is that since 2021, there's been a rule change um, for hill climb and CTT events, um, which means you have to use front and rear lights mm. for safety. Yeah. yeah. Even though you're on closed roads most of the time and also in daylight as well. Yeah. On a hill, on but, a hill. <laughs> but they are the rules. So, but what's cool is that a lot of riders are going to crazy lengths to have really mental lightweight little lights. Oh, on of course there. they are. Don't so you'll see lights. Yeah. Them less. So, but, but this was a cool one. So on on um, on Charlie's bike, you can see that he's actually got lights that were out of party balloons. And then okay. just like glued them onto the front and the back of the bike. So it's like a little LED, and that's it. So there's no standard for your lights. They just have to be one on the front and one on the back. It has to be a light. All right. It could be a candle, right? <laughs> well, the speed Andrew Ferrer guy would blow out. <laughs> I'd be fine. I'd be okay with a candle yeah. for my hill climbing. Um, I've got I've got one more bike to show everyone. Oh yeah. Right. Which is it's had the paint removed. It's incredible. It, it, so, right, I'm all for it. Right, classic hill climb bike, paint removed, mm. like no bar tape. 
It is uh, rim brake, super light. But what we're going to do is we'll, we'll do a, a quiz for the audience. Yeah. We'll do a poll in the app, and you can comment below as well. What is this bike? We've got a picture of it. Yeah. Well, we're going to. Well, yeah, we'll show a picture. Of it oh, okay. We'll show some other stuff as well. So uh, it's a really cool build in itself. So this this um, uh, bike was five point two kilograms. Yeah. Right, and it's got amazing oh, bling lightweight wheels on it. You know, lightweights. That's, okay. Yeah. Uh, tubulars and you know some really nice CNC mill brake calipers on. I'm not sure what those brake calipers are actually. Well, so you let us know what they are as the, well. Well, the owner of the bike didn't know either. So, oh. I, yeah. If there's anyone, if anyone in Tech Squadron knows, like comment below and tell us what they are. But very, very light. Um, and, and one by as well, classic SRAM. You know, E Tap 11 speed one by setup as well. So. Um, and all this on. chat of hill climbs, I'm, I can't quite decide if it's fired me up for another one yeah. or not. So next year, the British National Hill Climb Champs, which we've been just been discussing, is on the struggle where we raced what earlier a month yeah. ago or so. Mm. I, I don't know if I've got it in me to enter and race. I, you up for it? Yeah, I think I think we should I think we should build some bikes and go do it because the atmosphere would be amazing. I'm not and sure. You guys should all. We go along yeah. as well. You could do it. You could build a bike for it. You could maybe use my budget one thousand pound bike. Yeah, maybe I could. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let us know in the comments section. Have yeah. you guessed on the bike? We'll find out next week what it is. Comments of the week. God, blooming hell! We really went to town on that hill climb, lightweight it's cool, stuff. Though, isn't it? it is cool. Um, shall we just go straight to comments of the week? Yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. You want to do a jingle or shall I? Let's just let the editor pick whichever one. You just Editor's pick. discretion. Yeah, pick one from a few weeks ago. So first comment um, this week, I've picked out from Al Sher. They say, it took me this long to realise Ollie and Sam Darnold were separated at birth. Now, I'm not actually sure who that is. I had to Google who Sam Darnold <laughs> yeah. was. Um, I'm not too convinced. But apparently he's some like American footballer or something. He's like yeah. a quarterback or whatever they do. People also said you look like Kevin Magnuson from Formula One. Yeah, hmm. I've, yeah, I've had that a few times. Well, um, there you go. I, why couldn't you have picked out the comment where someone said that I looked like a Hemsworth? Well, I just left that out on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to stress, I don't, I don't agree. I but, don't even um, get too carried away. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, great comments. Yep. And then last weekend, we had the video out where I took a closer look and got hands-on riding the Carbon 12-speed group set. Yeah. People were loving it, actually. And a comment the that... Sensor Empire. Yeah, a comment that you and I picked out was actually from Trace Velo. Yeah. Trace Velo, uh, he has a YouTube channel. Shout out to Trace Velo, he's a yeah. good guy. Uh, we've actually had him on, on the show before. I did a video with him. Uh, but yeah, super nice guy. And he just did a really cool comment that was like really helpful yeah. about like... The fake, like the things that you felt weren't that great about it, yeah. it was like giving like, ideas for solutions. I think it's good to cool. see like other people that are into cycling making videos all about it, being positive about stuff. Because I'm mm. all about people being upbeat and light-hearted. Yeah, don't want any negativity around here, <sighs> do we? We're just too happy. Yeah. Um, but lots of people really echoing his thoughts and appreciating that we're taking our time to look at some sort of more budget-friendly options of stuff out. Yeah. There. So mm. we're gonna we'll we'll do some more stuff in that in that like vein of content. So if yeah. you like it, well, subscribe and stuff. Yeah. We're on it. Helps us out. Um, also, on the last comments. week's show. Yep. Go on then. Pointy Daity said, yeah. "I'd like to see Alex paint a bike. If only he had a bike that already had the paint removed." Yeah. Also, what happened to the the bell drop? We seem to have sort of missed Bill the bell drop. Bill deserved a bell it. drop. Oh, was this the light speed bike from last week? Titanium. I, let's if there's a if there's a bike that merits, merits a bell drop, we'll do it this week. Keep it in the back of our minds. Yeah. Um, also, someone called Brandon commented. I'm glad they finally got the tools back on the wall. It makes me feel complete. I've seen this. I'm glad comment. that's all it took to I'll make see. Brandon feel complete. <laughs> there used to be one um, cone spanner missing off the back, but. Um, I sort of just left it off for ages because this person kept commenting about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just trolling some <laughs> random guy in the, in the audience. And then um, underneath the video where I explored whether you should lubricate your inner tubes. Cannings I'm, has got involved. A very John Cannings. He's still, he's still very much alive, still yeah. very much with us. Yeah. Don't worry, just behind the scenes. He said he loves that Alex, Mr. Tubeless, was tasked with making the video. I mean, yeah, I love tubeless, but I love inner tubes as well. Yeah. We can all be friends. Siab Racing, or CB Racing, yeah, um, or maybe they're dyslexic and they meant to write write Saab. Who knows? Um, says nice to see you again, John. Get back on camera. <laughs> 
getting back on camera. I don't think he wants to. Don't think he wants to come and join us, does he? Mm. Also, yeah. on your lubing tubes video, which was utterly bizarre, <laughs> uh, Marco Rossi, who actually oh, the, posted yeah. the original question in a tech clinic, I think it was. He said, wow, thank you, Alex and GCN, for putting so much time and effort into answering my, testing my question in a proper way. You're the best. I am the best. Oh, yeah. The best. Really modest about it as well. Oh, the best. Oh, thanks for the nice shoulder rub, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, it's now time for the bike vault. As always, my favourite part of the show. And this is where you upload pictures of your bikes into mm. the GCN app. And then myself and Ollie pick them out, judge them to be nice or super nice or uber nice. And you can play along at home by voting yeah, your bikes in that. And app. submit your own bikes, yeah. So, first up, the most super nice bike. The most popular bike in the app last week. Yeah. Amanda W. Amanda DDW. It's a Scott foil. Ooh. I mean, ah. Oh, they met... say it's their first off the shelf stock bike for 10 years. Uh, that is a, I mean, that's a stunner. I absolutely love it. Everything is ticking all the boxes. Great background, great composition. It's just brilliant. Yep, super nice. Easy. Super nice. Easy. <laughs> Deserve it. <laughs> um, so first up this week, we've got Zavi.Roses with... A Peugeot PH501. From 1985, five years before I was born. Yeah. No, I can't Where's the picture gone? The... Where is the There bike? it is. Uh, we've had a no, it's bike there. vault technicality. There it is. Wow. What do we think of this? Oh, that's, I mean, those those are old uh, Peugeot 501 frames. That is an absolute classic frame. I like that. Yeah. It's not very well presented for the bike vault. It's say. not. It's Jaunty not. Jaunty angle, crank's not aligned. I can't quite see the rear valve to see if that. It's not in no. biggie smalls. I mean, what, the crank arm, weird. No, I, it's a nice for me. It's just a nice, sorry nice. about I that. I do love retro bikes. Um, We've also got this in the app from The Cycling Chef. Ooh, uh, I like that. The Cycling underscore chef. Here, it's got a brand new bike. It is a uh, Trek Emonda uh, SL7 ETAP. Ooh. Force ETAP power meter on it. Um, quick question, actually. How would you describe the colour on the front? Would you describe that as a burnt orange? It's like a metallic orange, mm. isn't it? Okay, yeah. But, I mean, come on. That is... Well presented. That's blooming good, isn't it, that one? Um, I really I like the fantastic. perspective of the road. Mm. Uh, I'm inclined to super nice that. That is, I think that's easy. I think that's easily a super nice. Easy super nice. There we go. Proper. Right. Who's in next? We've got um, a Trek Checkpoint SLR7 yeah. from user ID 42449. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a, a correct username somewhere for them. That might be the correct username. Don't, who are you to judge? It might be a droid. You're asking me who I am to judge in a section of the show where we judge bikes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> judge away. So this is a trick. Cast your judgment. Yeah. What are you saying? Um, I like the bike, I love the colour, I like the bar tape, I like the setup of that the bike. That stand looks a bit crap though, doesn't it? Like the stand a, is not doing it for an me. An actual, you know, Shadow stand would look a lot nicer. Shadow stand? It's not in big smalls. Nice. It's not in big, not in big smalls. No. Also, what is that wall That's in the dry, background? Dry stone wall, That's isn't it? a crap dry stone wall. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's oh. like a pile. Ollie, we're not here to judge. I'm a dry stone wall connoisseur. <laughs> That's rubbish. Okay. It's like a ruin. Dry stone wall vault. Nice. Um, next nice. one in is from Hanks SCO Scorpio, I think. It's a, it's a synapse or a synapse. With added bling, apparently. GRX DI2 on it. What do you make of that? Um, gold chain, fist bump. Oh. Boom. Go, flat pedals. Interesting choice. Oh, yeah. And a uh, big boy top tube. Very, uh, very clean. Box. I don't like the angle that the photo has been it's taken. Very top at. down. Yes. Also, what is with these? really awkward stands that people are using. What is that? Guys, about? get yourself over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, get yourself a shadow stand, make mine and Ollie's life much, much easier, There's, please. I mean, that is a really nice bike, but the the triathlon lunchbox on the top <laughs> tube is just no. Yeah, it's a nice from me. Mix, mix kicks chun 85. <laughs> yeah, uh, first has, ride in LA apparently. Has got a specialized Crux Pro. What oh, you, I like gravel this. Gravel bike. Yeah, I like this. The gravelly boy. It's doing it for me. Um, it's How's that held gear? up? Hopefully by a shadow stand. I can't see what's holding that up. What's going on? I can't see. Well, it's. 
Have we got a chain length issue going on here? Uh, I'm going to say it's, it's on the long side for a chain, but it's mm. hard to tell because it's got super wide range cassette. So yes, I think there's a. Mm. I like this bike. I like, kind of like it's. Uh, yeah, it's kind of. I'm close enough. I'm intrigued to go super nice. I'm kind of inclined to go. Are oh, you? Yeah. Do you think mm. you could go super nice? Do you think you could let that one slide through? No. Nope. And that's a nice. It's a nice from Ollie. Stump jumping 33s next. What do they got? Oh, this is a, an allied, an allied Ooh. able. Oh. Not a brand I'm Ooh. familiar with. Oh, I've, I've seen quite a few look allies. Look at the um, look at the chainstay. Yes, that is intriguing. So it's a chainstay that's above the chain. So in theory. That is a very interesting design feature, isn't it? You can't say I've seen one like that before. Uh, it's not in Biggie Smalls, but it's placed in the center of the cassette because it's one by trying to make the pack do the chain a little bit more parallel. Uh, valves are aligned, cranks are aligned, no accessories on the bike. I like it. I, I like think it's well presented. I, I think that's a super nice. We're going to say British Racing Green? Almost. I'm, I'm colour blind. It could be red, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's British Racing Green. Um, super, super nice. nice. Uh, that was our last bike. Oh, was it? So we've got another week with no Uber Nices. Never mind. Um, I people could just at, try it harder. On reflection, I think that foil at the top was a new, was a super, was like a bell drop, but yeah. Oh, it's done now, isn't Ooh, it? Uber nice. <laughs> um, this week's show, I've got to say, has been incredible. I've loved talking through all this crazy lightweight stuff. Yeah. Hope everyone else at home's enjoyed it. And don't forget, comment in the comment section down below or over on the poll and have a guess on that bike. Um, make life easier. Here's another picture of it now. Right, we're going to go now. See you later.